Yo. Hey, Anthony. What's going on? Nothing. How are you? I'm good. No complaints. How are you? I'm doing good. 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 You looking good? You looking Healthy. good too. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. God is good. And he is. <laughs> Yeah. So how have you been? Oh, man, uh, just gearing up uh, for this press run um, for, you know, the new season, uh, Wednesday. Um, but it's been good, busy um, and different, you know, with the whole pandemic and not actually being able to go to these media outlets and sit down and, you know, but it's all good, though. We're making the best of it. So has everything been virtual for you with the press? Everything, <laughs> everything. I haven't, yeah, I haven't done an interview in, with somebody since last year. Like sat down and actually done it. All my stuff has been like virtual, um, you know, Zooms and, you know, IG Lives and stuff like that. But it's cool though. Yeah, it has been different. Um, it's an adjustment, I would say. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, it's a new norm uh, for now. I believe it's it's it, this too shall pass, but um, we got to make the best of it. And that's the good thing about the human condition. Like, we know how to adapt and we know how to adjust. So, you know, we're going to get through it and you know, everybody's going to be good. Mm -hmm. So I want to jump right in there. Okay. And ask you, just start asking about your career life. So... How was it filming this season of Sisters? This season of Sisters was different from any other production that I've ever worked on. Um, you know, we first of all, we shoot um, very fast. Even if there wasn't a pandemic, we film extremely fast. Um, and this just kind of added on to it. Uh, we were in a bubble for, I think, 10 days. Uh, a little less than 10 days. We actually wrapped earlier than what was expected. We shot 22 episodes this season in 10 days. Uh, last year, we shot 25 in, I think it was like 11 days or 12 days. Um, the biggest thing is coming in with that energy like you had last season, but there's so many restrictions. You know, we got tested every day. Um, we uh, had to practice social distance when we weren't filming. Everybody mm -hmm. had masks. There was so much hand sanitizer, alcohol, just, you know, um, all kinds of stuff. So the only time we got to really um, uh, interact without a mask or the precautions was when we were filming. And once we got finished filming, it was like, cut, put your mask back on. <laughs> so, and, and the thing is, is, as far as us as a cast, we, everybody lives different places. Like LA, mm -hmm. I'm here in Atlanta. Um, we have some people that live in Florida, New York. Um, so for us, we haven't seen each other in like almost like a year. So of course, the first thing you want to do when you see some, one of your friends or your family that you haven't seen in a minute is give them a hug, dap them up, you know, mm -hmm. hug them, whatever. But it was like, no, 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 no. We got to practice social distancing. We got to practice this. So that was the the, the big hang up that, um, that I, I didn't really like too much because uh, my cast is like family. I love them all. And it was just kind of difficult with that. But like I said, we got through it and, you know, knocked out 22. And that was really quick. So filming in the bubble is basically you guys were living there as well, right? Yeah. No one in, no one out. So I know that was different. Yeah, I mean, um, it was, well, for me personally, um, you know, just a little bit. Personally, my father had just passed away um, on the 7th. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, and then I had to go to the bubble on the 9th. So, yeah, it was kind of. How did you cope with that? Oh, man, I, honestly, it was work. It was uh, my cast, um, Tyler. Everybody was real supportive of uh, what I was going through. And, you know, I just knew my father would have wanted me to go back to work. You know, uh, I just know the kind of man he was. He wasn't going to sit there or tell me to sit and cry and mope. He's like, I'm in a better place now. And, you know, I can hear him now. Like, don't you mess up that black man's money that he paying you? Like, you better <laughs> go and do your work. 
So, you know, that was a good thing. And plus, just uh, it was therapeutic because those who haven't watched the show, uh, my father actually passes on the show the same way my father passed in real life. Mm. So it was kind of like giving, giving myself over to my art actually was therapeutic and helped me through the process. And once again, I cannot uh, say that my cast, I can't praise them enough for just, not just like, you know, oh, Anthony, you okay, you okay, but just treating me, you know, knowing that they're there for me, but treating me like, okay, we got a job to do and not letting me sit and, you know, more and just, or complain about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, so it was cool though. No, that's, that sounds like a really good environment and yeah. good people to be around. Absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. First, I love Calvin Rodney. Oh, Even though I, I appreciate you, it. Anthony, I'd be like, look at Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> look at so, Calvin. Yeah, so how are you similar to your character? To Calvin? Oh, I can tell mm -hmm. you a lot of uh, things that we aren't. <laughs> we, that we that we are not uh the same okay. but um as far as similarities uh compassionate i'm a very compassionate person uh calvin is too he cares about others um respectful very uh goal oriented and driven um uh, what else i like to think i'm a decent dresser <laughs> calvin just kind of like ups the ante with that. Um, I mean, me, I'd be like, if I can wear a sweatsuit, I'll do it. But now don't get it twisted. It's going to be fresh. But Calvin's <laughs> going to wear something that may have like rhinestones or some stuff on it like that. But uh, yeah, um, family oriented. Love, I love my family. Calvin is real big on uh, family. And just really the main thing is just being compassionate. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and for a person who is like Calvin, like he's goal oriented. He has all these pluses. You would think that he was a, you know, a diva or a, you know, arrogant or conceited, but he's not. He's very loving, very into it. He understands who he is, even though other people may not. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if that was me, you, or I, I think you, we froze a little bit. Yeah, just a little. Okay. Okay, so how was it, how is it working with Tyler Perry? Oh, man. Um, it's everything that you you would imagine and, like, a hundred times more. Uh, Tyler is one of the most uh, giving and generous people, um, has a great spirit. I've known him since, I want to say, like, 2011. Um, but it's it's just so inspirational watching his growth and his journey through the years, um, just like how it is for someone who followed me ever since, you know, maybe I even first got on Facebook or social media to all the way now to where people are like, wow, I've witnessed your journey. It's the same thing. I've witnessed Tyler's whole journey. And what's crazy is in his mind, he still has so much further to go. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, like we, we think once we hit a level of success that, oh, it can't get no better than this. This man is a billionaire and this man does, he didn't even have to go and shoot all these shows. He did that for us. So, you know, and he's still trying to challenge himself in other avenues and other lanes. So it's just inspiring to be around him, uh, to talk to him, pick his brain, um, and just watch how he moves, watch how he works, you know, like we work fast. Like what we do at Tyler Perry Studios is unlike anything that anyone in Hollywood has done. Like if you go on any other show, I have friends right now that are um, filming other things and they're like, bro, my day, they'd be like, I got my side, my, my script today, my lines, it's only like three pages. And I'm like, I was like, I bet you only looked at it one time. It was like, uh, because we shoot, 130 pages a day wow. whereas if you go on another set like i don't know let's just say um scandal or something like that they're shooting like maybe 10 14 pages so anything anything more or anything less than what we do is a piece of cake for us you know what i'm saying so it's kind of like being at um 
a master class because I tell people all the time, if you can work at TPS under those conditions, uh, you can work on anybody's set. So yeah. it's, it's really, it's not only that we get to do a show, but we're also learning and uh, it's strengthening us as a cast and as artists. Well, that sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, 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 I'll tell you this, it's not for the faint of heart though. You know, yeah. you, gotta, you gotta come ready. Okay. <laughs> so, how do you feel about what's going on right now with the racial injustices? Oof. Um, well, first, um, I had to log off of social media or get off of it for a little bit because I found myself getting very angry, mm -hmm. and um, it started help. It started hurting my mental health because everything, I was so angry. Cause you know, right now we live in the social media age. Like people rarely watch the news anymore. They get their news mm -hmm. from their telephone. So first thing you're doing when you wake up, you're looking at what happened. Oh, someone got shot. Oh my God. Then you're angry and you carry that all day. And then by the time you go to sleep or try to go to sleep, you're looking at your phone again and there's something else happened and then you can't get any good sleep. So I wasn't getting any sleep at all. Um, I feel that this pandemic, um, the racial injustice that is happening in this world, uh, especially in this country, is it is shedding a light on something that some people have swept under the rug. You know, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people, you know, you, you with George Floyd, you saw it. Like there was, no, if you tried to spin that, there's no way you could spin that. Well, he was resisting. No, he wasn't. It's on. They have multiple angles on what what happened. So you can't even tell a lie and say that is this. And if you have a, if people have no issue with that, you're a part of the problem. In my opinion, you're part of the problem. I don't care if you're black, white. We're all human, um, and we should show a level of compassion for our fellow men and women. Um, but it was just making me angry. I protested. Um, I was I was in the streets. You know, it, it wasn't Anthony, the actor, or Anthony who, you know, uh, oh man, if something happens to you, you have something to lose. And I'm like, well, being an actor is my job. I'm mm -hmm. more than that. You know, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Um, so I have no problem speaking out against racial injustice. I'll tell you exactly who I'm voting for. <laughs> uh, and it ain't the one who's in office right now. Um, I feel like, and I try to look for a silver lining in everything, but I feel that Trump getting into office was a necessary evil to show this country just how ugly this country can be. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, now, I definitely do not want him to get a second term <laughs> at all, you know, but I think I look for the silver lining and everything. This let people know, like, you know, if you're at work and this person is, you know, let's just keep, keep it a buck, a white person at work who's been smiling at you all day, you know, and, oh, yeah, you know, uh, Anthony, you're a good person, blah, 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 and this, that, and the other. And they go home and may think something totally different or act totally mm -hmm. different. So now with him being in office, it has allowed those people who are closet racist to show their true colors. Yeah. And I say this all the time, yeah. you know, I would rather you call me a nigga to my face just for the fact that if you, I know how to deal with that rather than you lie and you, you, you put it on a front this way, but then you go home and talk to your friends and family another way and about me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I feel like something will change. Um, I'm always thinking positively, um, no matter what the situation is or circumstances. Um, but I think we just need to practice more love and exercise uh, more compassion, you know, throughout all of this, even the pandemic and, you know, social injustice. So is it safe to say that you're an activist now? You know, <laughs> I think if someone calls me that, I mean, I, I would wear that proudly. I personally wouldn't call myself an activist. Um, okay. I, I'm, I'm, I'm human. 
I'm a, I'm a compassionate human. And when I see something wrong, I'll speak out on it. My mother used to tell me all the time, you know, if you see something going wrong and you don't say anything about it, you're just as guilty as the person who's actually doing it. You know, mm -hmm. you can't turn in this day and this day and time, we cannot afford to turn a blind eye. We've done that for years. You know, oh, well, that's just the way it is. We have to speak out against this stuff. Uh, we just have to. It's it's and it's hard. You know, being black in this country is hard. Being a black woman. Okay, you back? Back. Uh, okay, I didn't know if you were froze. It, it may be on my end. I don't know. Um, but no, I have a, a very strong appreciation for uh, black women. Um, but it's uh, black women. Um, but it's hard. But we're the most resilient people on this planet. You know, we, we take a lot. We take a lot. And you, you just can't break our spirit. You can't, mm -hmm. it's, it's even as much as some people try to, you cannot break us. Um, and I, I love being black. I wouldn't want to trade this being, you know, it's, it's, I, I saw a meme one day said, yo, being black is the hardest thing in the world, but I wouldn't trade this for anything in the world. And I, I wouldn't. There you go. <laughs> okay, Anthony. Well, I have a few more questions, but they're going to be quick questions. Okay. But I want you to ask, like, answer really quick. All right. Okay. What's your favorite color? Royal blue. Dream collaboration. Yeesh. Uh, dream collaboration. Uh, Denzel Washington and Will Smith in a movie. That's a good one. Your favorite person? My mother. Okay. That's all I have. <laughs> if anyone has any questions for Anthony, I saw somebody ask if you speak Spanish. Do you speak Spanish? No, no not at all. <laughs> now, if you, uh, if I get cast as in a, in a role that requires me to speak Spanish, I will get all the Rosetta Stone and tutoring and everything I need to portray that character, but just offhand, nah. Very poquito. Ah, maybe a little bit. No hablo here, too. <laughs> no, nah, see. Uh. Okay, well, Anthony, thank you so much for doing this with me. I appreciate it. No problem. Anytime. All right. Well, see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You have a good one. You too. Yeah.